Hey lovely people, it's your girl Nana and this is Onana Nation. So if you're new here, a very special welcome to you. Please go ahead and subscribe as we dive into today's topic. Shout out to all my amazing subscribers. I mean, you guys are the ish, you guys are the go go. I appreciate you guys for all the love and support. So today we're going to be doing updates on the viral UB embarrassment case. You guys remember the video I shared of a little girl whose friend snatched a wig from her head on UB campus. That video really went viral. Everybody was like, Onana, please get me this lady's name, get me her number. We want to bless her. We want to help her. Oh, poor girl. So it really, it really sparked a lot of sentiment people were feeling sorry for her and all that stuff so i was looking for this girl everywhere i was searching from whatsapp everywhere i finally got her number i spoke to her we had a lengthy conversation where she told me everything that's going on so this little girl her full names are acho tabe shalom and she is from acquire subdivision shalom is the first child in the family of five her dad is of late and she lives with her mom and they are struggling you know the means are limited when you're a single mom taking care of five kids her mom is trying her best but you know shalom according to her story means are still limited so during our conversation on friday she went ahead to tell me everything that really happened she said mom i'm going to be honest with you you know what happened on that day the video you guys saw was actually a skit was actually a drama acted by me my junior sister and my friend the epoxy you guys see in that video is actually my friend but the fact that we're acting it means uh, doesn't mean it didn't happen to me it's actually my real life story this is something that happened to me months ago i borrowed something from a friend i went to campus the friend embarrassed me the friend was making sure that everybody in class knows that i'm wearing a dress from her i felt so embarrassed like oh my gosh if i could afford my own stuff i wouldn't be in this position if i could be grateful for what my mom is giving me i wouldn't be in this situation if i just appreciate the little i have and be content with the little i I have i would never be in this kind of humiliation so she felt so bad she went back to her mini city she cried she had some moments of self-reflection she was like wow i need to act like a comedy skit or a video of some sort and put it out there to sensitize youngers that we should be very happy with the little our struggling parents are able to give us because today i just went through embarrassment on campus so although this is a comedy skit this actually came from shalon's real life experiences and she decided to share it through a video the video we saw so so those who are willing to help Shalom, I'm going to put her number here. I'm going to put her names here. You guys can send her something through Momo and all that good stuff. So we had a lengthy conversation on Friday and she left me some long voice notes. I'm going to put them here so you guys can listen to the story from the horse's mouth. You guys can hear everything she has to say. I love you guys. Thank you all so much for sharing so much love and concern over this little girl. There's so many little girls out there who suffer from cases like this, whether it be drama or real life. There's so many girls who have been embarrassed by their friends on campus, whereby somebody gives you something in the comfort of their home, in the privacy of the municipality, and they come to campus to embarrass you for no good reason. It's happened to so many people before, and that's actually happened to the Shalom here. So this is Shalom. For all those who want to help, Shalom currently doesn't even have a phone of her own you can imagine a young UB student with no phone Shalom doesn't own any wig if you see her she's wearing her natural hair the pictures I saw of her she's wearing natural hair if you see her now she's still struggling and these things actually happen to her so people of goodwill who wanted to help her who've been asking oh, Nana, get her number please give me her name yeah I'm going to put the number here I'm going to put the names here so you guys can send her a little you know momo your own contributions or those who have wigs for her you can contact her and ask her how best to send the week to her those who just want to see her and you know give her physical gifts of clothing and all that stuff we can equally contact her so yeah and if you're a little girl watching me today going through the same experiences you should be strong little sis be content to the little your parents can give you i guarantee you there's kids in the villages who are looking for that little you have or for that little you are minimizing and they don't have it there's kids who are very intelligent they want to go to school they don't even have somebody to pay their fees so if your parents have at least paid your fees and they are paying your mini city for you to go to school do not be pressured by lifestyle moliko do not be pressured by you be lifestyle do your own little end eh? just cover your ears and study your book before three years you will graduate too and you start working and you make your own money so we should just learn to be happy with the little we have and be mindful of the kind of friends we work with so we don't fall in embarrassment remember that tough times don't last only tough people do be strong and be resilient in whatever you do better days are ahead so i'm going to stop talking now so you guys can listen to um shalom's voice hello Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time the audio is meeting you. I'm Shalom, the girl on the video that has been going viral on social media and other platforms, both offline and online. Well, 
it's really acting. It, the thing was acting, but the acting was, I was really trying to pass out a message, what happened to me, and also to educate other young girls out there on the danger of not being contented with what you have. Okay, it goes like this. I didn't really have, like, I don't have a week on my own or a watch and other nice, nice like, items, things. I don't have a that, and my mom is the only one struggling, and I could not be demanding on her to do hair, to do all these things. And the rest is a place where people look nice and good, so I, really, I was really feeling bad that I was just the exception amongst my friends. So I used to borrow their wigs sometimes to put on clothes, sometimes shoes, so I can at least meet up with the standard. And there was there's this particular friend of mine that loves to remind me a lot how I should be like, borrow, borrow, mommy, beg, beg, you've begged, you've borrowed. Whenever she sees me with something nice, even if I bought, even if it belongs to me, she'll still be like, Nami, are you sure you own this thing? Who did you beg from? Who did you borrow from? She keeps on remind, reminding me of this thing. Every day when I post my picture, when I saw the phone and I post my picture on WhatsApp status, she'll be like, where did you get this one from? Where did you borrow from? And there was this day I wore her wig and we went to school. Something happened. Was it a conversation or something? And we're laughing and she'll be like, I'll remove this. When I remove this thing from your head, you go to the house like that. I don't know if she was choking, but in my heart, I felt a lot of pain. I was really angry, I was sad, I was depressed. And there was another day we were walking on the road and she'd be like, oh, we watched a video together when they were removing some things from people's body when they borrowed. So we were laughing and she'd be like, she turned, she looked at me and she said, if they remove this, somebody, if people come to take their things out on your body, you go home naked. That for starting from the shoe, clothes, and you go home naked. She loves this statement. I don't know if she's joking or it's because she's from a well-to-do family, like they are rich, they own cars and nice house, houses and hotels. And I watched a video on YouTube when somebody was really embarrassed. Was it on a statue? Somebody's statues on YouTube, somewhere on a movie, and somebody was embarrassed for borrowing. Uh, the video touched me and it reflected a lot on my life and I, I felt like what if I'm really embarrassed like this after borrowing something from somebody in school, in the municipality and somewhere, what if I'm really embarrassed like this after borrowing something, then I took it upon myself to act it out so I can educate young girls on being contented with what they have. I mean, I've been living my natural hair like this after seeing that video and I've been really happy. I've come to a realization that I've been really happy. I don't feel bad like when it's staying somebody's face, you know, they, uh, they, um, <coughs> The thought that comes to your mind, ah, this dress should not get torn, no. this dress should you protect some, you'll be protecting even the hair, you'll be like, <laughs> there was this day, I, oh, how weak, I went to school, and then she said, see, as you, pardon me to speak, I uh, know, with my aunt Pigeon, what she said, let me just wake up, like, see, as you don't bend my wig, <coughs> that you've made my wig to go upside down, you've made it so, and other friends were there. I just smiled, just covered it up like I wasn't feeling bad, but down inside, deep down inside, I felt bad. So I tried to just start just keeping my natural hair, just um, just be with my normal hair and still look good with it like that. And I decided to add this video. I told my younger sister about it, that I want to shoot something like this. She smiled. I told a friend, uh, my sister's friend, the fair girl, the fat girl I was removing from my head, I was my sister's friend. I told her we should shoot something like this. So this should be part one to educate people the danger of borrowing or stealing. So we went to school. Just the three of us knew was acting. The rest of the people, the audience, nobody knew. That was why the the reactions was really first hand reaction that they were really. So I feeling bad for me. Some were insulting me. Some were saying they should remove the shoes that I was putting on. Even the <coughs> outfits and the way that we used to act in that movie, I equally took them from somebody. Oh God, the shocking part of it. The wig I took it from somebody in my ministry. A lady in my ministry. I begged that I want to use her, her human hair since she has really nice wigs. I want to use her human hair and shoot a video in Ubi. The back that she gave us. And even the red gown and the jean jacket I had on belongs to the fair fat girl that was removed. The bulky, that bulky girl that was removing the wig from my head. The clothes belongs to her. Just the shoes were mine that I wore for that shooting. 
So even in the middle of the in the midst of the video of shooting my like, to post things and I was like, yeah, this is it. I really need to actually this. So when we did that, we were to open a YouTube channel since I didn't have a phone. I was to open it so I could not open it again because I didn't have a phone. I sold my phone to write one exam, one government exam. So I didn't have a phone. So my sister opened the YouTube channel in her own phone, posted a video there. And before we could get to the house, the video was everywhere, everywhere on social media, everywhere. And people, when I walk in the street, they'd be like, Nada get that, Nada get that, Nada get that. And some of my friends posted, some of my friends in Bamenda, they posted like, like not the new team, it's not something new. Like of course, like people that have once begged from them, they're like it's not something new. It's not something new. I mean, some people were not surprised at all. Some of my close friends that they know what's up, they were not really surprised at all. They're like it's normal. It's normal for her. So that was just the part one of it. It's really an acting that wanted to really educate people, public disgrace, and <clears throat> the second skit was out when. Um, a guy and a guy abandoned me, but now that, that one isn't my story. I just wanted a continuation for us to go through it so people can really learn a lot of things. And the YouTube channel that my sister opened, I asked her to put a name called House of Lessons so it can really be educating young girls on um, a danger of growing, begging. I mean, they should be contented with what they have and other things. And secondly, I acted because. I really needed money for my exam. After selling the phone, the money wasn't enough. <clears throat> and somebody advised that when you start doing acting, that's my acting when I act like that and I put it on YouTube, people give likes and comments. <laughs> people subscribe, it gets to a number of likes and subscriptions that YouTube start paying. And it was really slow, given the fact that there are a lot of videos on YouTube and so I just felt discouraged on posting it. After shooting, I felt so discouraged. I could not post the video anymore because I felt discouraged. And people, the stigma, they, whenever I go to be like, that's the girl that stole, the girl, the girl, the girl, the girl. At one point, I could not leave my house again. But, well, I accepted the fate, I accepted the challenge, and I was out to really educate. And, <laughs> well, that's what happened. And... We are still going. We are still hoping on going on with the video. Though it's really challenging, it's really challenging. But I'm happy. I've shot that video. The people are not really understanding. They've not really gotten my message, like what I'm trying to pass out. They've just been posting and so posting their own things. But I just wish I want to really finish everything so it can be really everything. So when people watch it, they can really learn a lot from the video. Thank you very much for understanding. Mm -hmm.